Hi folks, my name is Navinav Mishra, Senior Product Manager at Rafe, and today I'm going to talk about how we can easily enable and set up Backstage in Rafe in a matter of minutes as a means to enabling developer self-service. So to start, Backstage is an open source platform built by Spotify, and it's really for enabling de developer self-service and for building developer portals by platform teams. Backstage has some, of core, some key core features, for example, a software catalog, uh, technical documentation, the ability to build that quickly, integration for Kubernetes and more. And it has a, it's very extensible and has a very uh, extended uh, ecosystem of plugins. So you've seen many vendors, for example, AWS or uh, Argo CD coming into the fold and building plugins uh, that allow developers to provision applications uh, build CI CD systems, uh, self request for infrastructure very fast and with guardrails. And so, one of the key questions that remains is how do we get Backstage up and running uh, very quickly? And in Rafe's Kubernetes operations platform, you can get this up and running in a matter of minutes. So, the thing that the steps that we can take to do this is first, we'll create a Backstage software add on as Backstage has a Helm repository, and we can expose that software add-on so that we can add that to a cluster blueprint. And by adding that to a cluster blueprint, we can then deploy that to any type of cluster, whether it's AWS cluster or a, a DigitalOcean Kubernetes cluster, and have this uh, Backstage uh, internal developer portal running in all our Kubernetes clusters. And so let's see how we can do this. So we've published a recipe I'm going to follow the steps in this recipe to get this up and running. So first, what we're going to do is we are going to create a repository that points to the Backstage Helm repo. So in here, I'll select type Helm. And from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this Backstage um, Helm chart URL. And because it's public, um, I'll select internet for the reachability, and I don't need any credentials. And when I click validate, notice that in the console, we can see that validation is successful, meaning I can access and reach this repository. Next, what we'll do is we're going to create a uh, catalog. And the reason we're going to create this catalog is we want any, you know, you know, platform admin or uh, somebody managing the software for a cluster to deploy this software add on easily. And so we can create a new catalog and point to that Backstage Helm repo. And when I click Sync, what we're going to notice is that the sync was successful. And now I have the Backstage Helm chart up and ready, ready for me to deploy. And notice that Rafe syncs all the key information, including the readme, uh, key prerequisites, all the different versions, and the values.yaml file. And so we should save this values.yaml file as we are going to be using this uh, to configure some extra parameters um, in subsequent steps. So next, what I'll do is I'll create an add-on, a software add-on, and so we can put that as part of our cluster blueprints in future steps, and then deploy that to clusters. So let's create this backstage add-on, and I we require a namespace, so I pre-provisioned this namespace on cluster that I'm running. So we can call this version version one. And notice that we have to upload a values.yaml file. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to open a text editor. I'm going to open this file, uh, this values.yaml file that uh, we had downloaded. I'm going to change some a uh, couple parameters. First of all, I'm going to set the name of the service. And this for this you can really put anything. Uh, and the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, enable Postgres. Uh, so we could use so Backstage can use that as the database for storing some of the data. This is typically uh, common in most enterprise use cases. And that's all we need to do. So we'll save we'll save that YAML file, and notice that it's pulling the uh, image from this specific registry. 
And what I'm going to do now is upload that new value XAML file. And we'll notice that all the parameters that I had configured are saved. We can validate that with the Postgres set to true as well. And I'm going to use this version and I'm going to click Save Changes. And now what happens is we have this uh, software add-on ready for us to use. And now there's two things we can do. Either we can just deploy a workload uh, referencing the software add-on and have Backstage running in our cluster. But I want to be able to take the software add-on have it as part of a blueprint. And with this blueprint, what I can do is then apply it to multiple clusters. So any cluster that I deploy in the future, that could also have Backstage up and running in it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cluster blueprint. And in this cluster blueprint, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something very minimal as the default. So we, because we, we don't need other software add-ons like visibility or ingress, we're just doing something very basic in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that backstage software add-on that I just created. And then I'm going to click save. And so now notice that I have backstage as part of the software add-on, as part of this blueprint. And now I can apply this blueprint to a cluster or any cluster, whether it's an EKS, AKS, doesn't matter. In this, in this case, the cluster I have is a cluster running in DigitalOcean that I imported into the Rafe console. What I can do now is just update the blueprint to the one that has the backstage software add-on and click Save and Publish. And so what's going to happen here now is that this uh, software add-on is going to get deployed uh, to the cluster. And so we're seeing two or four add-ons ready. And notice how we point out the backstage namespace and that we are deploying this backstage software add-on for you to use. And meanwhile, I'm going to open my terminal as the way we're going to access this uh, Backstage instance is via a kubectl port forward. So Backstage the, uh, is running on port 7007. And so we can just do a port forward um, to from the Backstage instance to our local host port 7007. So notice that the Backstage software add-on was deployed successfully. And so what we can do is I can go um, kubectl into this. So let's do that. So what we have here is for the cluster, you can download the cube config if I have if you haven't downloaded it already. In this case, notice that I already have it. And what we can do is we can run a cube cuddle command. And so in this cube cuddle command, what's going to happen is we we are pointing to the specific cube config of the cluster. This one, this one, there you go. And I'm going to be using the uh, cube config of the test cluster that I just created. I'm just going to make sure. So the service that I'm running, so we, we should validate whether uh, the service that I created is called Backstage Add-on. So I can easily do this. I can just go to my namespace, see the deployments, and looks like it's called Backstage Instance because, of course, that was the name we set in that values.yaml. So let me set that. And we'll do the port forward um, 7007 to localhost 7007. So let's click Enter. And the port forward has started. So what I can do now is just access it. And there you go. We have Backstage up and running. And now I can 
uh, create different plugins, um, you know, look at the documentation, add new documentation. Um, similarly, like if I wanted to bring in, um, you know, register existing components to create these entity pages that basically, you know, with those components, you can, you can have different workflows for, from a developer self-service point of view um, and define those as, as a platform team. And so that's what Backstage really enables. And notice how we got this up and running so quickly uh, via the Rafe Kubernetes operations platform. And while I did this, of course, for an imported cluster, once again, you know, the, blue, the steps that I took could be applied for any cluster type. And that's super powerful. And so feel free to check out our recipe um, at, at the Rafe docs. You can go to our documentation page. Um, and basically under the uh, documentation, go to recipes, developer self-service and backstage. Thanks so much.